Step into the mesmerizing world of dangerous botanical allure, where nature's enchanting creations hide a sinister secret. In the midst of a breathtaking garden, where vibrant hues and delicate petals reign, deceptively alluring plants lurk, armed with lethal toxins that could spell doom for the unwary. Meet the infamous trio, monkshood, hemlock, and belladonna. With their bewitching appearances and lethal potency, these plants have captivated both naturalists and curious souls throughout history. As we embark on a thrilling journey through their treacherous realms, we unravel the mysteries behind these deadly beauties, reminding us that Mother Nature can be as menacing as she is magnificent. This is a tale where beauty and danger intertwine and a single touch could lead to the ultimate price. Monkshood, also known as wolfsbane, is a perennial plant that harbors a dangerous secret. While its beauty is undeniable, its poison-laden nature has woven it into the tapestry of history, popular culture, and legends alike. In ancient times, the Greeks attributed the origin of this plant to the drool of Cerberus, the infamous three-headed guard dog of Hades. During the Dark Ages, it was believed that this plant granted witches the power of flight. In 1931, the movie Dracula portrayed this potent herb as a formidable weapon against vampires. Remarkably, Monkshood continues to make appearances in contemporary works, such as the renowned Harry Potter series. So is monkshood really the flower of nightmares? You bet it is. In August of 2022, a dozen people were hospitalized after accidental ingestion of a small amount of monkshood when a restaurant in Ontario used a spice mix containing the plant, which is also called the queen of poisons. In China, during May of 2018, 15 people were accidentally poisoned with a homemade drink that included monkshood. Nine of the victims were placed in intensive care and four died. According to WebMD, a 25-year-old man ingested monkshood with berries while on a walk. His symptoms started with nausea and vomiting, and he eventually collapsed about three hours after ingesting parts of the monkshood plant. He did not survive. While most fatalities caused by monkshood are due to accidental ingestion, it is also believed that you can absorb some of the toxins through your skin. Monkshood typically grows in moist soils of mountain meadows, along streams, or in other damp areas in the temperate regions of the Northern Hemisphere. It is commonly found in Europe, Asia, and North America. If this plant is native in your region, look closely at the screen. If you see this plant in your garden, be careful and use gloves while removing it. Monkshood has also been used medicinally for many years, from ancient times to the modern era. I would caution you about using anything over the counter with monkshood as an ingredient. As many as the case studies I read while making this video cited examples of people being sickened by concoctions that led to an overdose of monkshood. Even in ancient times, people knew how deadly monkshood is. Did you hear the story of Cleopatra's demise? Once believed to have committed suicide by snake bite, historians now believe she actually committed suicide by drinking a mixture of opium, monkshood, and hemlock. And that brings us to the next plant on our list, hemlock. Famous for being used in the execution of Socrates after he was sentenced to death, Hemlock is another lethal plant that has killed many over centuries. Today, both poison hemlock and water hemlock can be found in almost all areas of the U.S., while it is also found in areas of Europe. Surprisingly, water hemlock is the more dangerous of the two. You wouldn't think that this plant as a member of the carrot and parsley families would be deadly, but it sure is. Water hemlock is said to be the most violently toxic plant that grows in North America. Only a small amount of the toxic substance in the plant is needed to produce poisoning in livestock, wildlife, pets, or in humans. The toxin, cicutoxin, acts directly on the central nervous system, causing convulsions and death. This toxin actually has a carrot-like smell. 
The tubers of the hemlock are the most poisonous part of the plant, but all parts of the plant are poisonous. Like monk's hood, toxins can be absorbed through the skin and through the respiratory system. So use protective gear to rid your garden and yard of this deadly posy. Even after the plant has died, the dead canes can remain toxic for up to three years. Each hemlock plant can produce up to 40,000 seeds, which can stay viable for up to six years, making this plant invasive in many areas. If you're interested in learning more about invasive plant species, check out my other series, The Most Dangerous Plants and The Most Dangerous Plants Part 2. In the realm of botanical wonders, few plants captivate the imagination like belladonna, also known as deadly nightshade. Its enchanting allure is matched only by its deadly nature. Belladonna, with its dark history and potent toxins, has earned a notorious reputation as one of the most poisonous plants in the natural world. Belladonna is a perennial herbaceous plant native to Europe, Western Asia, and North Africa. It is recognized for its striking bell-shaped purple flowers and glossy black berries, which give the plant its alluring and mysterious appearance. The name Belladonna means beautiful woman in Italian, as it was once used to enhance women's beauty by dilating their pupils. Belladonna is native to England as well as Central and Southern Europe, where it can be found in disturbed areas along roads and waste flights. This species has become naturalized in both New York and three Western states, including Washington, Oregon, and California. Belladonna contains a complex mixture of tropane alkaloids, including atropine. These compounds have strong effects on the central and peripheral nervous systems. Atropine, the most abundant toxin, blocks the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, leading to severe symptoms. Throughout history, belladonna has played a chilling role in numerous well-known poisoning cases. One example is Emperor Claudius of Rome. The Roman emperor's death remains a subject of historical debate. According to ancient accounts, he was allegedly poisoned by his wife, who used belladonna to eliminate her husband and pave the way for her son Nero to ascend the throne. Pope Alexander VI was a notorious Renaissance-era pope who is believed to have met his demise due to belladonna poisoning. Rumors persist that he was poisoned by his enemies in a plot to eliminate his power. Another example is the case of Frances Howard, Countess of Somerset. Frances Howard's infamous poisoning case rocked the court of King James I of England. She conspired with her lover, Robert Carr, to poison her husband with belladonna. The plot was discovered, leading to a sensational trial and subsequent execution of both conspirators. Luckily for us, belladonna also has a positive side. Today, we use atropine from belladonna in many modern medicines from ophthalmology to cardiology, and it's even an antidote for some nerve agent poisons. If you have this infamous plant, you should dig it up entirely because if there are any roots left in the ground, it will resprout. As I said with the previous plants, wear protective gear as toxins can be absorbed through the skin and cause severe dermatitis. Also, belladonna is extremely toxic to pets and can cause paralysis or death, so keep your furry friends away. For today, we've reached the conclusion of our exploration into the treacherous realms of monkshood, hemlock, and belladonna, and we're left in awe of the intricacies and dangers that exist within the plant kingdom. These poisonous plants have captivated human imagination throughout history, simultaneously enticing and warning us of the perils that lurk in nature's embrace. However, our journey does not end here. Brace yourselves, for part two of this gripping saga will soon be unveiled, promising an equally thrilling and captivating adventure. In the upcoming installment, we will delve deeper into the most deadly plants on earth. So stay tuned for the next chapter, which promises to both educate and ignite our curiosity. Together, let's embark on this captivating journey where danger and allure coexist and the wonders of the natural world continue to astonish us. Part two is just around the corner, and it's certain to be an adventure, so don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching today. This is a new channel, so it would really help me grow if you would like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day.